welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike, or Mike if you prefer, and this is going to be my review on Batman Catwoman The Gotham War. This is going to be my part two. I'm going to do two more issues in this uh, review. Before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe on this guy's channel. Hit the bell. You never know when I will be dropping reviews. Um, if you want to stay in touch, that's the best way to stay in touch. But, you know, it's all free. It don't cost you anything. All right, so I've already done a part one on the first two issues. This is going to be the second two issues, which is Catwoman issue number 57. And then we got a kind of a side issue, but this is a Batman Catwoman, the Gotham War, Red Hood, and this is issue one. Um, I'll be doing these in two issue parts to knock them out. <clears throat> so all together there will be four parts to this whole event. If you have not caught up on the first, you know, the first review or the first two issues, go check that out. You know, pause this and go check that out before we get going. All right, so we got Catwoman. And not a lot going on in this issue. Some cool stuff happened in the issue, but ah, story progression, not so much. So we got, you know, back at the back cave, we got Batman confronting, you know, Vandal Savage and him wanting to know, you know, what, what the hell is going on and Vandal Savage recently purchasing Wayne Manor. Uh, basically, you know, that, you know, Batman's attacking him in his home kind of thing. Um, you know, uh, Vandal Savage explaining that for some reason he, he, you know, he was brought back to Gotham. He needed a place and he just happened to buy it and it happened to be Batman's house. You know, I mean, he found out after he moved in kind of thing. Um, we have this moment here with Bruce and he's like outside of Wayne Manor and he's, you know, he's kind of a you know, confessing to his parents about how he failed and he lost the manor. Uh, we break over to Catwoman and she's going over how, you know, recently Bruce had, you know, broken up her compound and and kind of, you know, yeah, I think it was like a three-part thing that he, he broke up. It was like one of their their uh, robberies that he broke up and then he broke into their safe house and, and he's kind of, a, you know, set a morality thing throughout, you know, Catwoman's whole gang. Um, Basically, we have a scene with Catwoman, and she's trying to not only bring the morale back up, but also warn you know her crew that you know even though Batman will not kill, that he will not hesitate to you know break bones and stuff like that. And the whole point of what they're trying to do is you know they're trying to stay hidden and stay you know out of the the, the police captivity and villain captivity, but they're trying to make a a, a better version of Gotham. And so far, Catwoman's you know, version seems to be working. You know, crime is way down. Yada yada yada. Um, so recently, out of the Bat family, you know, Jason, Jason Todd, the Red Hood, has taken sides with Catwoman. At this point, he's kind of a you know, Catwoman setting him up with a um, a job. It's supposed to be at a gala. Catwoman will be there in disguise, you know, on the floor. But basically, Red Hood and his crew are supposed to go in there and steal some stuff. Um, we break over and we get Batman. He's, you know, doing what he do, does best and, you know, his detectiveness and he comes across this building, evidently a clue left by the Riddler. We have seen him in, you know, the previous issues. Um, but, he, you know, Batman figures out the, you know, the, his clues, makes it in there and gets a proposition from Edward Nigma himself. Um, you know, but basically a riddle, but he's leading Batman to the gala, basically giving him insider information because at this point, most of the villains are pretty pissed off at Catwoman because she's taking all their henchmen kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, Bruce, you know, he, he's over here in disguise and he makes it into the gala and then, you know, we jump over and we got, <clears throat> you know, him catching up with Red Hood and eventually, you know, kind of... It's it, at first it's part of the plan, you know. Red Hood ends up taking off, believing he has lost Batman, kind of thing. Uh, we have the scene inside with uh, Catwoman, and basically the the uh, the big part of you know Catwoman doing this this whole thing at the gala. Eventually, um, and I'll just kind of flash forward through some stuff, but um, eventually she runs into somebody important at the gala that she wasn't expecting. So we go back over to, you know, Red Hood and Batman and, and, you know, Jason believing he lost Batman, of course, you know, he didn't, lose Bat he didn't lose Batman. And Batman gets to a vicious point where, you know, he literally, like, pulls him off the, you know, his, his bike at top speed and stuff. And to the point where Jason didn't think Batman would do that kind of thing. And now Jason is pissed off. He sees it as, like, Batman trying to kill him thing. Um, 
they go into the tussle, you know, Batman does what he does best, eventually entangles Jason Todd, um, whispers one of the creepiest things I've ever heard from, you know, Batman's lips, but he was like, you've always been a good soldier, and then he takes out a syringe and bloop, and, and puts Jason, you know, he's like, rest now. And he puts him out of his... <laughs> um, so we go back to the gal, and we're going back to, you know, um, and Catwoman has taken, like, a moment, and uh, Nightwing happens to take this moment, and she's kind of... Um, it's a conversation between the both, and, and Nightwing's kind of warning her kind of thing, you know, um, especially about Jason kind of thing. Um, we go back, you know, she leaves Nightwing... Uh, we go back to the gala, and we, we, you know, that important person that I was talking about, what happens to be Vandal Savage, and Vandal Savage at this point is trying to recruit uh, Catwoman to whatever he has going, and that's kind of the gist of, you know, what goes down, there's no more information than that. Uh, we go back to Batman, and Batman's waking up uh, Jason Todd, and uh, basically says he has some plans for him kind of thing. Uh, Catwoman is on the move. She's, you know, trying to find Jason. There's no contact kind of thing. Um, the very last page of this book we get a scene, and this is Catwoman's, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank at her name, but this is one of her, like, lieutenants, and we find out that this is none other than Vandal Savage's daughter, and, you know, she's in there, like, spying it up kind of thing. But that's where this issue leaves off with. So next up we're going to do the, uh, Gotham War Red Hood issue number one. Um, it starts out like two weeks ago and I will say this most of this is just for I want to assume like new readers that aren't they don't know about Jason Todd but it's this whole thing where Jason Todd is um, tracking down you know members or henchmen looking for the Joker that's kind of his his motive his motif it's what what gets him going kind of thing it jumps into the present you know and um, we are at that moment when uh, Catwoman and Red Hood is basically like, you know, Catwoman's giving Red Hood like a crew. Uh, we got these three guys and Jason lays down, you know, how he's going to run a, run his crew and if anybody wants to quit and yada 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 and now's that time and one of them does end up leaving Jason, you know, claiming that he's probably the smart one out of the bunch. Um, so we get a brief explanation on what Jason's going to do and honestly, I didn't think it was that bad. You know, he's, he's talking about he's going to you know, break down everything they knew because these guys are henchmen, you know, from some supervillain, right? Uh, but they're not really, you know, master thieves or, you know, but so basically that he goes through, he's going to teach them defensive skills, you know, thievery skills, how to avoid conflict, you know, and, you know, just better ways of, of thievery kind of thing. Um, eventually we get to this point and it's like we go through these first tests with these two guys and the two guys' names is like Bash and Simpson or Samson, uh, don't quote me on the names, but basically they start out with the self-defense, um, we go into like our second test, and it's this, it's this bar scene, and it's supposed to be like a legendary henchman bar, but at the moment all the henchmen are currently kind of working for Catwoman, so it's kind of on the table, you know, so Jason Todd takes these two guys here, and um, basically he start he, he, you know, starts out the conversation with saying that he knows they work for the Joker, and they, they did work for the Joker, so, um, he knows how the Joker works, so, now it's time to tell, you know, Jason Todd where, where the Joker is, kind of thing. Um, these two guys stick to their guns, you know, saying that's why they quit Joker, that they're not any, they're, they're not tied to him anymore, they're just trying to make a living for them and their family kind of thing, um, that they don't have any, they don't know where he is kind of thing, and currently this is main continuity, so he, he's kind of battling himself with the clone or whatever, clone, clones. Um, so, <clears throat> eventually Jason Todd, you know, he tells them that they did pass the test, that that was, that that was a test, you know. Um, that's the way he makes it seem. So the third test is basically they're going to get into a fight and he's going to give them weapons and they can't attack or, you know, they basically have to get out of the situation in a peaceful situation. And Jason Todd sets him up with this biker gang and, you know, he sets him up so where they, they, they have to fight and stuff. Catwoman, you know, greets Jason outside the bar and she's, she's kind of pissed. She's like, look, you, you've been doing this whole thing. You know, you, you've got my guys. They're about to get their their bones broken, and and Jason just tells them that they're not ready and stuff. And sure enough, they get thrown out of the window. But but they they did pass the test. It gives them an A plus. They didn't attack. Uh, we get this scene with Bash, and basically, 
Um, we find out that he did used to work for the Scarecrow, and the Scarecrow is using him. Uh, we, he's, you know, basically invading his nightmares and giving him his own nightmare and stuff, and that's going to come to play in a little bit. Now uh, we go to the next day, and Jason Jason's just going back to him, like breaking him down. You know, um, he keeps going back to the Joker thing, swearing that they, that they, you know, swear allegiance to the Joker. But even even right here, Bash is acting weird. He mentions that he had this nightmare. Um, involving Scarecrow, that Scarecrow is going to come after them. But Red Red Hood goes ahead, and they mention that they're going to go on this thievery mission. Uh, thievery mission, um, and basically, it's a quick, you know, get inside, grab the stuff, and get out. They do manage to get inside. As they get out, Bash starts freaking out, and he sets off the alarm. It calls in a cop. As soon as the cop comes in, Red Hood appears, and he's like, "Hey, man, you know who I am." Um, he was like, you know, when I tell an officer to put down their gun, you know, if not, they're going to end up in the, in the hospital. The cops are freaking out, like, I can't just, you know, let y'all go if somebody finds out. Red Hood, you know, uh, confesses to the guy that, that they'll just put everything back, that nothing bad will happen, that, you know, um, because the guy behind him, one of Red Hood's guys, Bash, he wants to kill him. All of a sudden, he's been acting strange. That's why he set off the alarm, and it has to do with the scarecrow stuff. Um, but in that moment when Red Hood is trying to, you know, calm down the officer, and the officer was about to leave, um, we got Bash that just comes in and starts trying to kill the officer. Red Hood has to jump in, and he later, literally beats the, the living crap out of this guy. It looks like Bash is just, you know, mush on the ground after Red Hood gets, gets through with him. Um, so we jump over, and we got... You know, Red Hood being called in by Catwoman, explaining what went down and what happened, you know. Uh, we have this altercation between uh, Tomcat and Red Hood, um, which I really want to see. You know, Dario take on Red Hood. Um, it's kind of like Lieutenant for Lieutenant kind of thing. Um, I don't know if I claim Red Hood was me. He is a, a Lieutenant. Let's just, you know, I don't know. Um, so basically, Red Hood does get called in, and, and the conversation is talked about, and it, it, you know, Catwoman's done with this shit. She's like, look, Jason, you've been on this, like, Joker kick, it's, it's your whole stick, it's getting old, you know, I brought you in, you know, knowing you could do better, you could be better, and you're still on this Joker shit, you know, and she's like, you don't get it. She was like, if we win, and all these guys work for us, these henchmen, Joker's gonna be so much easier for you to get, because he'll be all by himself, and... And Joe, you know, uh, Jason Todd goes back to his whole bullheadedness, and he's like, ah, I can do it on my own, and I'll take Joker, even with the whole crew, and so we eventually get Red Hood, like, doing his own thing, and he is greeted by Stephanie. Um, it is mentioned that Butch did not show up, that he had quit, um, uh, you know, because Jason Todd beat the fuck out of him. Well, the dude didn't quit, he just disappeared, right? So that that's what Red Hood is checking on, and, and back girl, my girl, spoiler, Stephanie Brown, she's already there on investigation, and um, they they found Bash, and it looks like um, Scarecrow got to him first, um, and this leads you know both sides knowing that Scarecrow is got to be using some of these guys to get to the Bat family while they're going through this whole war thing. Um, but that is where <laughs> this issue leaves off. Again, um, there is. <laughs> Four more issues to go in this event. I will be breaking them down. You know, uh, there will be a part three and a part four. Um, but that is my review, guys. Let me know what you're thinking of this event. I'm still loving it. This was kind of like a, the Catwoman part was great, but the, the Red Hood was kind of a slow moment. But I still liked it. I mean, it still lines up with everything that I know about Jason and, and current stuff. And I like the whole motif about, you know, Catwoman's like, hey, man, you know, you can get the joke by himself versus Joker with a whole bunch of henchmen. So I kind of like that ideology as well. But guys, that's my review. These are my thoughts. Let me know down below if you're digging the series, this this event that's going on. Um, I mean, it's still got, you know, it hasn't broken main continuity. So for me, it's still when when I'm I'm reading, you know, both of these sets, Batman and Catwoman. So I don't know. But guys, that's all I got for you. Please let me know down below what you're thinking. Hit that like button if you already haven't. I, I greatly appreciate it. It helps with the whole algorithm battle crap. But guys, that's all I got for you.